A reading from the first book of Kings. When the Queen of Sheba heard the fame of Solomon, she came to test him with hard questions. She came to Jerusalem with a very great retinue, with camels bearing spices and very much gold and precious stones. And when she came to Solomon, she told him all that was on her mind. Solomon answered all her questions. There was nothing hidden from the king that he could not explain to her. When the queen of Sheba had observed all the wisdom of Solomon, the house that he had built, the food of his table, the seating of his officials, and the attendance of his servants, their clothing, his valets, and his burnt offerings that he offered at the house of the Lord, there was no more spirit in her. So she said to the king, the report was true that I heard in my own land of your accomplishments and of your wisdom. But I did not believe the reports until I came and my own eyes had seen it. Not even half had been told me. Your wisdom and prosperity far surpasses the report that I heard. Happy are your wives. Happy are these ser your servants who continually attend you and hear your wisdom. Blessed be the Lord your God who has delighted in you and set you on the throne of Israel. Because the Lord loved Israel forever, he has made you king to execute justice and righteousness. Then she gave the king 120 talents of gold a great quantity of spices and precious stones. Never again did spices come in such quantity as that which the Queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm, the mouths of the just murmur wisdom. The mouths of the just murmur wisdom. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him, and he will act. He will make your vindication shine like the light, and the justice of your cause like the noonday. The mouths, the mouths of, of the just, just murmur, murmur wisdom. wisdom. The mouths of the righteousness utter wisdom, and their tongues speak justice. The law of their God is in their hearts. Their steps do not slip. The mouths, the mouths of, of the, the just, just murmur, murmur wisdom. Justice. The salvation of the righteousness is from the Lord. He is their refuge in the time of trouble. The Lord helps them and rescues them. He rescues them from their wicked and saves them because they take refuge in him. The mouths, the mouths of, of the, the just, just murmur, murmur wisdom. wisdom. The Lord be with you. With A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus called the crowd and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. But anyone with ears to hear, listen. When Jesus had left the crowd and entered the house, his disciples asked him about the parable. He said to them, Then do you also fail to understand? Do you not see that, whenever, that whatever goes into a person from outside cannot defile, since it enters not the heart but the stomach and goes out into the sewer? Thus Jesus declared all foods clean. And he said, It is what comes out of a person that defiles, for it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come, fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise 
I've not had the joy yet to go to Ethiopia or Eritrea, but it's beautiful. I've had some friends that have gone there and it's very interesting, both the Catholic and the Orthodox really put an emphasis on this passage that we heard as our first reading today. This connection to the Queen of Sheba, the Queen of uh, Ethiopia and the general region, that's where Sheba is referring to, right? Uh, even into South Sudan, uh, too, that's where likely her reign would have helped. And it's beautiful because they even kind of go back and they, they say that possibly even this Queen of Sheba may have even married Solomon for his great wisdom. And, and they, they even in their churches will have pictures of Solomon, beautiful mosaics and, and the sort of the glory of the Ethiopian church, the Eritrean church is, they would say would actually come from this wisdom that came from Solomon passed down from David. And of course we know that Solomon's the, the great, 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 great times a little bit more grandfather of our Lord Jesus, this tie, this importance to wisdom and it's beautiful because it, the first passage here actually focuses a lot on the outward. And sometimes we might kind of have trouble with that, uh, especially in light of the gospel here, because uh, Jesus is saying it's not the outward observance of, uh, of eating food and things like that that really makes a person evil or makes them good. It's that what comes from within. But nevertheless, though, this first passage says that it's, it's the inward that affects the outward. And uh, as we hear from the Queen of Sheba in our first reading, when the Queen of Sheba had observed all the wisdom of Solomon, the house that he built, the food of his table, the seating of his officials, and the attendance of his servants, their clothing, his valets, and his burnt offerings that he offered at the house of the Lord, there was no more spirit in her. And that's a really interesting phrase here in Hebrew. It's almost like, uh, in some ways, she might even be kind of copying, uh, well, not copying, but... Uh, Jesus talks about us not having any uh, envy, but it's the idea is that like it was so beautiful. He was so wise. The wisdom from within Solomon uh, echoed out into the whole world. And that's why we make our churches beautiful and everything. That's why we, we take time in our houses and make them into domestic churches. It's because beauty is a reflection of what's on the inside. Now, of course, you can have beauty on the outside and not on the inside. And that's what Jesus gets into today. Now, the context of this specifically is that we read in the law of Moses and Jews still follow it to today, that uh, there's certain foods that are off limits and certain foods that are, that are clean. But as we see here very clearly in the gospel, thus Jesus declared all foods clean. And we know that too. But it reminds us, we, we might not be focused necessarily on not eating pork or the norms of the law of Moses, but there might be some things that we're focused on outwardly that stop us from making these real changes that Jesus wants us to make. That we shouldn't think any more of stealing, of hurting, of wickedness, of, of, of sort of a sneakiness to, to climb up the corporate ladder. That's literally what the, the word is in Greek. Uh, envy. That's, of course, the commandment that... Uh, the people of Israel, that's where they were the most offended at. Otherwise, the Ten Commandments would have gone longer. It was the last ones. Don't be jealous of your neighbors. And we heard that, hear that long list, right? Because that goes into the inwardness of the heart. Moses actually, from there, the Ten Commandments stopped and people couldn't hear it anymore. It was too, too judgmental, if you will. And so that's why Moses had to go up the mountain and hear the rest of the laws of God. When we focus on the outward and don't get into the inward of really Father Adrian changing himself to stop being so envious, to stop slandering, to stop being so prideful. Because indeed, in Catholic education, we'll see this, that the kids, the kids, students see, see through us. They know that if we're a gentle person, that we're not a prideful person, that we're not envious, that we don't want to steal things, we're not licentiousness, deceit, wickedness. And so let's really think about today as we continue to prepare for Lent. Uh, we have almost uh, about 60 days till Easter here and Ash Wednesday begins next week. Uh, how we can prepare ourselves starting next Wednesday on Ash Wednesday to, to really to, to root out these things and then people can say of us uh, the beauty and wisdom of Solomon that is echoed throughout all of Ethiopia, all of Eritrea, could be said of us.
when the queen of Sheba had observed all the wisdom of Solomon, the house that he built, the food of his table, the seating of his officials, and the attendance of his servants, their clothing, his valets, and his burnt offerings that he offered at the house of the Lord, there was no more spirit in her.